Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm gonna be showing you five JavaScript events which you probably didn't know. Okay, let's get into the list. Okay, first up on this list are the offline and online events. So as the name suggests, these events allow you to react to when your user's internet connection goes offline or back online. So let me show you how this works. I've got this script tag right here and these are available on the window object. So we'll say, listener and listen for the offline event just like that and now of course when the user's internet connection drops out it's going to run this function so as an example I'll just say alert your internet connection has dropped out okay something like this and that should be enough. Now, of course, in your scenario, you may want to present your user with a friendly game, or you, of course, may want to display an actual message instead, but I'll save this here, go back in the browser here, I'll refresh, and of course, now we're gonna get no events fired off because my internet is perfectly fine. But we can actually mimic this using Chrome DevTools by going inside the network tab. Then under throttling, we can just say offline and bang, we get that message right there. Okay, to go back online, we go no throttling and that's done. Now, that leads me to the next part, which is going to be the online event. So I'll just copy this here and replace this with online and you guys have already guessed it. This of course is gonna run when the user's connection comes back, just like that. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, go from offline back into online and we get that second message right there. This next one is the has change event. So this one here is gonna be useful for building single page applications or when you don't want a link redirect to actually redirect and instead make it a little bit more dynamic. So how does this work? Well, basically this event is gonna fire off whenever the hash part of your URL changes. Okay, so right here, I've got these three links. If I go back in the browser, we've got something like this. So. Pay attention to my URL. When I click on home, we get hash home, about, hash about, and contact, hash contact. So these are all valid links, but they don't redirect the user, which is why they're, you know, changing the hash part and not the whole URL. So we can use JavaScript to, of course, react to these changes. And if you want to, you can display different content depending on what the user has just selected without refreshing the page. So going back inside VS Code here, we can hook onto the listener and hook onto the hash change event just like that. And now we can simply go inside here and we can just say console.log hash has been changed, okay? I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh and click on this and we get a console log there when the hash changes, okay? Now, you can also access that hash part of the URL if you need it by going back inside here and we can simply console.log the location Okay, just first off, I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, click on the link. With this location object, you've got the hash part right there. So simply saying location.hash is gonna give you that hash. Like I said earlier, you can easily, you know, uh, display different content depending on what the user selected without refreshing the page. Coming up next, we have transition end. This one here is one of my personal favorites and I'm gonna show you why. So we've got this div right here with an ID of div. Now in the CSS, we're saying, look, a width and a height, a background of red, and it's gonna take three seconds for the width to change. Now, we're gonna be using JavaScript to make the width of this div change when it's being clicked on. And then I'm gonna show you how to use the transition end event. So let's hop down here into the script tag. We'll get a reference to our div by saying const div equal to document.getElementById. And we can, of course, just pass in there the div ID. Now we'll just say, look, div.addEventListener. When the div gets clicked on, we are going to simply change its style width to be 100% of the page. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, click on the square, and it takes that full three seconds to change that width. Now, we're gonna be able to react to when this transition finishes 
using the transition end event. Let's go back in the JavaScript here. It's gonna be set on the div itself. So we'll say div.addEventListener, then just say transition end. You've also got cancel, run, start, and so on, but transition end here, then go inside this function and we'll just say, look, once it finishes, we'll just uh, console or alert and say it is done. Something like that, okay? I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, click on the square. And as you guys have guessed, it's gonna display that message when the transition is finished. So what is this event used for? Well, it can be used to build user interfaces. Of course, if you're doing things by scratch, it's gonna be useful. If you're using a framework, not so much, but still, this one here is a very good one to know. Next up, we've got the load events. This one here is used for loading large images, which might take some time to finish loading and you want to react to when they are done. So right here, I've got this button and an image tag, which has no source. If I go in the browser, we've got something like this going on. So we're gonna say, look, when I click on the load image button, we're gonna load a large version of the decode logo. So going back inside here, we'll say, look, btn load dot add event listener and listen for the click event not just yet for the load but uh, listen for the click event we're going to say look when you click on the button logo dot source equal to then we can say decode logo large dot jpeg which i hope is my file name i'll save this go back in the browser click on load image and it takes a while if i refresh it takes a while to refresh, but I'll click load image and we can see here, okay, it was called uh, large decode logo. Uh, so my mistake there, but let's try again. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, bit of time, okay, that's fine. Load image and it's gonna take a little bit of time for this image to load up and there we go. So it's now loaded, but we can react to that using, like I said, the load event. So going back inside here, we can say logo. So attaching onto the image itself, dot add event listener, we can say load. Once the image has finished loading, then we can simply say alerts, it is done. Save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, click on load image again, and we're gonna get the alert when of course the image is finished loading. Now, similar to the transition end event, this one here is going to be useful when building user interfaces and making things a little bit more interactive and friendly. Now, it's taken its time to load up. I'm hoping it's gonna be done very soon. And there we go, so it is done loading. And last on this list is the scroll event. So this one here lets you be a little bit more creative in what you can do with this event. So I've got a bunch of text on this page. If I scroll down here, I want this top left indicator to tell me what the scroll Y value is of the page. And basically scroll Y refers to the amount which I've scrolled down. So let's do this using this scroll event. Let's go inside VS Code here head down inside the script tag and we'll just say listener and listen for the scroll event. So of course now this function is gonna fire off whenever I scroll down the page. I'll say console.log and I'll just say scroll. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh here. And we can see when I scroll, we get those events firing off every single time. Now. You wanna be careful with what you put inside your handler. You do not want to put really intensive tasks because of course it might slow down your computer's uh, or your user's browser, especially those low powered laptops. So make sure you keep this scroll event to really simple and short tasks, okay? So let's update this scroll Y value. Let's go back inside here and we'll say const uh, indicator equal to document dot get element by ID, pass in the indicator here, because of course the indicator is referring to that div, which says scroll Y zero pixels, okay? We're also using position affix to of course make it float. Um, let's go back down here now, and we'll just say indicator dot text content equal to, then just say scroll Y, then say simply just 
window.scrollY, giving us that pixel value of how far down we've scrolled on the page. Go back in the browser, refresh here, and we can see we get that pixel value updated every time that we scroll down. So like I said, you can get creative with this event. I've seen people uh, create those sort of you know, scrolling indicators on the very top where the bar fills up as you scroll down the page. I've got a video on that as well if you're interested, but um, that is just one of the use cases for the scroll event. And that is all for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And before I go, I want to quickly mention I am now uploading courses to Udemy. It's going to be linked down below. My most recent course was a JavaScript DOM crash course, which is perfect for beginner JavaScript developers who want to learn the JavaScript DOM. And I'll see you in the next video.